Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Word Podcast. We start a new little endeavor today. We just finished in the last episode going through the book of Ephesians, and I thought we would go and pick up the letter of James, okay, James. And so uh, I know most of us are sort of listening along, so when you get an opportunity, don't do it while you're driving down the road right now, but uh, go and start reading the book of James. It's a very short book, a little letter. And so we'll begin with the first chapter, first verse right now. It says this, James, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. And so it's often the case in many of the letters in the Bible, not all of them, but many of them, we have a little introductory type of thing which gives us some understanding. So we know that he's saying, hey, this is James. And I always find that interesting because in our society, if you receive a letter, which is really sort of a rare thing nowadays, isn't it? Uh, even an email, okay, we don't identify ourselves until the end of it. You know, we'll say signed or sincerely or in love or blessings or something like that and put our name at the end of it. Well, they do it at the very beginning right here where you know who it is. And he describes what he is. He says, James, a servant of God, a bond servant of God. Alexum says, a slave of God. It, uh, the Greek word is doulos, and it carries this idea that we really are a slave of the one, that we're in a permanent relationship of servitude to one. Now, when I say servitude, you're immediately think, having a negative connotation, right? <laughs> you're thinking that negative type of thing. <clears throat> but this is the type of thing that because of our faith and because of our belief and the decision we made to receive of the grace and mercy that the Lord has poured out upon us, that we repent. We confess, we call upon the name of the Lord, and that we have placed ourselves in relationship. Okay? We have received what the Lord has for us. And we are a servant of him, a bondservant. It goes far beyond uh, a housemaid type of thing. Okay, So he says, James, a bondservant of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> so you see God the Father, you see the Lord Jesus Christ. Now then he tells us who he's writing to to the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad. Greetings. The 12 tribes, well, he's speaking of uh, Jewish people. Okay? Israel was divided into 12 tribes, and he, this is literally called the scattering, the dispersion. Okay? And it's, I think it's the diaspora. It is diaspora, diaspora, depends on how you want to accent the syllable there, right? And it literally means, uh, it carries the idea of, of when those who were Jewish believers were scattered about. And they were scattered two or three different times that we see in the Scripture. So, you know, the question is sort of begged at the very beginning, why is James, and you know, which James is this? There's more than one James in the Scripture. You know, we'll figure this out as we go along. Uh, why is he writing to Jewish people, you know? Is it just those that are Jewish? Is there something more to it? Well, as you get into it, you find out that he's writing to those who are believers. <clears throat> Remember that the Lord came to all the world, beginning with the Jew and then the Gentile. And so these are those that have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And the 12 tribes, that's the idea that it's to all of y'all, okay? And I know that you're dispersed abroad. Uh, there was dispersion. One dispersion occurred uh, with the... Uh, <clears throat> when the northern kingdom was hauled off in captivity by the Assyrians. Another dispersion when the southern kingdom was hauled off to Babylon. Another one, uh, during this time right here, the Romans, okay, were kicking the Jews out of uh, Italy, okay? They were kicking them out of various parts of, the, um, of their empire. And so you have the same type of thing. So he's writing to these folks who have been displaced. They've been dispersed. And so that right there from the get-go, before you get beyond even the first verse, you're beginning to see and understand that perhaps some things have been going on in their lives. Perhaps there have been some difficult times. Well, watch this. Verse 1 again, James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. 
verse 2. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Well, there we go. And, you know, we've, said, we've heard various translations of this. The ESV says this, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, or it works out patience, as King James says, worketh patience. And so we have some of our questions answered right here from the very beginning. He's telling them, count it all joy, folks. And then he says, count it all joy, my brothers, my brethren. So what does that tell us? Yeah, James is a believer right here. So if he's calling them brethren, okay, if he's calling them brethren, then we know that he's writing to a group of believers. We know that they're of the 12 tribes. That means they were Jewish in background. And we know they've been dispersed, that they've been scattered. And we can infer rather strongly that this dispersion was against their will because he's saying, hey, man, count it all joy when you encounter various trials. He begins with this. He introduces himself, addresses who he's writing to, speaks a word of greeting over them, literally the word greeting, <laughs> and then just jumps into it. He says, you know what, folks? Count it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter various trials. Well, why should I count it joy when I encounter trials? Well, then he tells us in verse 3, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. We are going to encounter trials that will test our faith. And in testing this faith, it brings endurance. Now, often the question is asked, well, well couldn't God do something about that? Couldn't Jesus stop these trials? Where we wouldn't? Yes, he could. Absolutely, God can do anything. There's no limit to what he can or can't do. Okay, he could. But remember this, that even in trials, okay, even in trials, there is a far greater good afoot here. There's something far greater. There's something that will bring even greater glory to the Lord. And that's the thing that we're going to see that's going to be expressed throughout here, that it brings glory to God and it produces things within us. Now, I'm not talking about the fruit of sin. I'm not talking the fruit of you were doing 75 miles an hour in a 35-mile-an-hour zone and you, you're in trouble. And you got a speeding ticket and you spend a night in jail, okay? You say, oh, I'm undergoing trials like Paul were. No, you weren't. You broke a law. Okay, you were doing something stupid. <laughs> okay. That's not the type of trials we're talking about right here. He's telling me, he said, you count it all joy when you encounter various trials. Remember what Jesus told Timothy. He said, all who desire to be Christ-like will undergo persecution, will have trials, will have tribulation. But then James gives us some insight in that. He says, you know this, that the testing of your faith, that's the type of trial he's looking at. The testing of your faith, that which challenges your, challenges your faith, and that could be that which uh, somebody is argumentative with you and challenging what you believe because you have that element. element. It could also be simply of walking in obedience in the Lord and not sinning, of being holy, of being righteous. Anything that challenges that, knowing that the testing of your faith, that it will produce patience, that it will produce endurance, that it will produce steadfastness. So our time's out. Our final thing that we should be thinking about this, folks, in the midst of this, consider it all joy. Count it joy. That doesn't mean that I may be happy. It doesn't mean that I feel joyful. No, I am going to count it all joy. Count it all joy when I encounter various trials. Why? Because I know that the testing of my faith will produce endurance. And I also know that the Lord's totally in charge. I also know that He knows about it. So I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to fret. I'm going to press on and trust in Him. Well, again, I'm Dale. I think James is going to be very, very helpful for us. So uh, you know, take a moment and read the first two or three verses here of James. And I'll see you again next time.